to session here we will discuss eagle eye spotters or cases i will show the case pause the slide for some time you can pause the slide and see and uh, write the findings and then you can move on to the video so that you can find the answers intentionally the history is not given this is the first case the patient presented with cough and chest pain you can see there is a homogeneous opacity noted in the right lower zone just above the right dome of diaphragm so and no other obvious lung findings and even the cardiac shadow appears normal even the bones and soft tissues appears normal we will try to see what are the hidden zones in the chest we have to screen so that we can come to the diagnosis so the hidden zones in lung are behind the, the these are the epiphyses hilar regions retrocardiac location and below the domes of the diaphragm so we will try to see the image again so this is the case you can see there is a homogeneous opacity not in the right lower zone but here when you concentrate clearly you can see there is a subtle eccentric calcific calcification in the situated in the right lobe of the liver i will zoom the image for you this is the homogeneous opacity noted in the right lower zone and here you can see there is a eccentric faint rim of calcification so there is a lesion underlying in the liver which is related to this homogeneous opacity so we will try to see wh what is this homogeneous opacity and what is the lesion in the liver so better we will go for a ct for this patient so here this is the ct for the patient you can see there is a hypodens cystic lesion with faint rim calcification and also there is fluid collection in the right pleural space here you can see this is the cystic lesion with faint rim calcification and there is a breach in the wall of the cystic lesion with ex ex expulsion of the contents into the pleural cavity so this case turned out to be a hydrated cyst with rupture into the pleural space or pleural cavity so again we will try to see the lesion so this is the hydrated cyst and this is the this is the fluid which is expelled into the pleural space due to rupture of the hydrated cyst so remember the below the dome of the diaphragm as one of the hidden zones you have to see for chest radiographs next case you can see the patient presented with abdominal pain and even vomitings clearly you can see wall of the stomach is there above the dome, dome of left dome of diaphragm suggestive of hiatus hernia mostly a paraesophageal type of hiatus hernia and here you can see there is a diverticulum arising from the duodenum so these two are the obvious findings so what is the subtle findings in this case we'll try to see so this is the case we have discussed the findings when you see there are subtle calcified foci noted in the right hypochondrium so i will zoom the image for you these are the subtle calcified foci in the right hypochondrium probably in the gb area so this is the circle which enlightens the calcifications in the gb area so these are nothing but gallstones so if we not if we are not able to see the gallstones the diagnosis is different we will write either this has a hiatus hernia with diverticulum but whenever you see the gallstones the whole of the diagnosis is changed so we have seen the gallstones the hiatus hernia and the diverticulum when you club all three the diagnosis is saint striad so what is saint striad saint striad we can see stones in the gall bladder diverticulosis and hiatus hernia you can remember the mnemonic as sadhu that is s e is for stones in gall bladder d is diverticulosis h is hiatus hernia another another mnemonic is saints are divine that is diverticulosis they sit on stones gall stones and they meditate nothing but here it, it is turned into mediate that is hiatus hernia so remember saint striad next case you can see the patient presented with fever and he is a diabetic here you can see there are faint calcifications in the region of the seminal vesicles this is the urinary bladder shadow and there are no obvious findings in the bone except some degenerative changes so what are the zones which we have to see in the pelvis where we miss the findings are first one that is the si joints and even adjacent to the si joints where we can see sacroiliitis or even osteitis condens and cilians and we have to concentrate on the sacrum the bones and even the sacral foramina sacral ala next you have to concentrate on the lower vertebra that is l4 l5 and even l3 that visualize lumbar vertebra the pedicles lamina and even in the absence of the pedicles which can be seen in metastasis and others are the bones that is the femori medial ends of femoris where we can miss the insufficiency fractures we have to see the all the other bones soft tissues ligamental attachments 
but most common most of the times we will miss the area that is midline symphysis pubis and below the symphysis pubis we miss the area that is in the scrotum or in the urethra so sometimes uh, there can be urethral calculus or sometimes there may be pathology in the scrotum here you can clearly see there are multiple mottled layer foci noted in the scrotum so this is you can see multiple mottled layer foci noted within the scrotum in a diabetic so the diagnosis this is you can see clearly the multiple air foci noted in the scrotum even extending into the uh, along the soft tissues of the pelvis so this is a classical case of foreigners gangrene next case the child presented with uh, pain in the pain in the throat and even difficulty in swallowing there is mild adenoid hypertrophy the bones are normal prevertebral soft tissues are grossly normal but here when you see there is a faint uh, faint linear calcified foci noted in the lower esophagus here you can see this is the faint linear foreign body this foreign body is nothing but a chicken bone so the patient presented with even pain in the throat and even dysphagia due to this foreign body that is chicken bone so faint foreign bodies are very subtle findings we often miss in soft tissues so try to see for those faint foreign bodies next case this patient presented with trauma you can see there is a soft tissue swelling noted in the right temporal region frontotemporal region of scalp but when we see clearly or we can see there is a subtle finding that is nothing but there is a minimally displaced fracture in the right squamous part of temporal bone with adjacent soft tissue swelling so fractures of the skull are easy to miss so try to see carefully for the fracture of skull bones so this is that fracture minimally displaced fracture with adjacent soft tissue swelling next case you can see this is also a case of diabetic uh, incidentally we have seen there are faint curvilinear calcifications noted extending from the lateral to the medial aspect in the pelvis and there is a, even there is a this is the bladder so these are nothing but vas difference or ductus difference calcifications so vas difference or ductus difference calcifications are faint calcifications along the vas difference or ductus difference and in the seminal vesicles which are commonly missed so these uh, try to see concentrate in the area of the pelvis in the seminal vesicles and vast difference areas especially in a diabetic next case uh, the child uh, this is a female presented with abdominal pain here you can see these are the motor, uh, gas shadows with a non specific bowel pattern no obvious findings in the bones and this is a mature skeleton but here you can see there is a cystic lesion and there is a small calcified focus so this is that hypodens area this is the there is a high hypodens area or uh, radiolucent area with eccentric calcified focus noted within it in a female which is presented with abdominal pain so we went to for ultrasound for this case so here you can see this is this is the ultrasound where you can see this is a cystic lesion and there is multi, there is a ecogenic area which is showing dirty ecogenic shadowing with post acoustic uh, uh, shadowing which is nothing but iceberg phenomena and even in the ct you can see this is the cystic lesion with multi with faint areas of fat densities and even calcifications so this is a classical case of left over and dermoid cyst or teratoma next case this uh, patient uh, came for a pac routine pac checkup you can see there is a clearly there is a osteochondroma arising from the humerus on the right side so when you see when you see and diagnose this as a single osteochondroma but when you try to see in a detailed fashion and try to see this one when so try to concentrate on the epicus hyla retrocardiac zones and below the cardiac zones along with the try to concentrates on the bone and soft tissues so we'll try to see the radiograph again this is the osteochondroma but this is on the right side but when you concentrate on this area you can see there is a sessile osteochondroma on the other side of the humerus so this is the sessile osteochondroma on the other head side of the humerus so when you see that say this the diagnosis completely changed so this is not a single osteochondroma so there is multiple osteochondromas so these subtle findings change the com completely change the diagnosis so this is a case of multiple osteochondromas or diaphyseal ecclesis next case the this patient presented with trauma you can see there is a right thin sdh which is showing blooming on gre and which is extending along the fax there is even old gliosis in the right paratoxpital lobes and also in the right superfrontoparietal lobes but when you see clearly there is a subtle finding in this case you can see this is the flow void on the left ica but clearly you can see the flow void on the right ica is completely lost so there is something going on in the right ica and here clearly you can see there is hyperintern signal in the keratoid and cavernous segment of right ica 
so venogram was normal in this case so suspicious of these findings uh, we have done uh, angio for this case clearly you can see that is right even complete non complete non visualization of the keratoderm and cavernous segment of right ica so this was a case of right sgh with pre existing chronic right mct atrial infarct due to right icr mc occlusions so try to concentrate always in the skull base where we miss in cavernous sinus the flow voids of the ica paracellar zones even the petrous epiphysis basic spinoid basic lival regions and even the cervical spaces of the and even skull base and skull base foramen try to concentrate on these areas where we commonly miss the findings last case i think you can see this is the patient uh, presented with pain abdomen here you can see when we zoom the image clearly you can see there are two ureters on the right side and even two ureters on the left side so this is a case of bilateral duplication of the ureters thanks to dr bill lemetta sir for contributing this case thank you all